Hi, in this video, we're going to have the ultimate battle of the elements. Sun, over here, versus wind. And those two elements of sun versus wind are going to be combined, and we're going to be able to determine in the, using this methodology which is more important for evaporation. We're going again back to Phoenix, to the reservoir in Phoenix, using the same results that we have for the aerodynamic method and the, um, the energy balance method. And we're going to combine those with the combined method. And so here, our fundamental equation uh, for the combined method is um, E, in this case, uh, so the rate of evaporation, um, which is a function of uh, delta, and I'll define all these terms in a second, delta plus delta uh, over gamma. Multiply or multiplied by E sub R plus gamma over delta plus gamma multiplied by E sub A. So you can see that we're using the results from the previous calculation. We're using the rate of evaporation from the energy balance method. We're using the rate of evaporation from the aerodynamic method and uh, we're modifying those with this delta and gamma. So what is delta and gamma to start with? They are, the first is delta, which is uh, the gradient of the saturation vapor curve. So in class, we have talked about this a few different times. Uh, this is a graph on the horizontal axis of temperature and on the y-axis of vapor pressure. And that function looks um, something like this. And this, is, this function is um, E sub uh, AS, and this, the, which is the, the saturation vapor pressure curve. And so delta is the gradient of that curve, fundamentally. And so we can, we can calculate that. And then the other part of uh, the equation here is gamma, which is the, the psychometric uh, constant. And that psychometric constant um, is um, 66.8 pascals per degree C. So we're going to use these, we're going to calculate delta, we're going to use gamma here, um, and our previous results uh, for the two rates of evaporation, in, and then combine all these to calculate uh, an overall um, rate of evaporation. So first, um, we can... Um, calculate delta, and so I'll do that um, over here. And so delta is equal to 4,098 multiplied by um, E sub AS divided by, and this kind of funny number again, 237.3 plus T alpha um, all squared, where T alpha, again, is our temperature of 21 degrees C. So we have this from our uh, previous um, calculation as well. And we can substitute that in. So we have 4,098 multiplied by 2,487.8. Pascals divided by 237.3 plus 21 degrees C all squared, which results in a delta of 152.8 pascals per degree. So now we have delta, we have gamma, and we can then directly calculate uh, the rate of evaporation using the combined method. So here um, we um, uh, rewrite this equation and substitute the values in. So we have E is equal to our delta, 152.8. 
divided by or divided by um, delta plus gamma, which is 219.6, multiplied by our previous calculation of our rate of evaporation for the uh, energy balance method, which is 8.8 .8 millimeters per day. I'll move to the next line just to save some space here, plus our gamma. 66.8 divided by 219.6 multiplied by our um, rate of evaporation from the aerodynamic method, which is 1.83 millimeters per day, which results in uh, a combined estimate of evaporation of 6.67 millimeters per day. So what that suggests is that the um, vapor transport is more important and vapor transport um, dominates in this example calculation that we made of Phoenix. So now we've learned three different methods for calculating evaporation. And I hope you can go out into the world and uh, calculate evaporation for any lake, reservoir, or soil.